I said, who's excited? Yay! That's a bit more like it, that's a bit more like it. Show of hands, how many muggles in the building? I'm not a couple, a couple, you're all aware that magic exists now. We can perform magic without getting in trouble from the ministry. Yeah, sounds like it. Well, if everybody's ready, I think it's time for Ow. us to sort some people into houses. Oh, no, I'm, I'm good for that. I think some people know already where they are, yes. but let's see yes. where everyone else is. The doors swung open at once. A tall, black-haired witch in emerald green robes stood there. She had a very stern face, and Harry's first thought was that this was someone not to cross. For first years, Professor McGonagall said Hagrid. Thank you, Hagrid. I'll take them from here. She pulled the door wide. The entrance hall was so big that you could have fitted the whole of the Dursley's house into it. The stone walls were lit with flaming torches like the ones at Gringotts. The ceiling was too high to make out, and a magnificent marble staircase facing them led to the upper floors. They followed Professor McGonagall across the flagged stone floor. Harry could hear the drone of hundreds of voices from a doorway to the right. The rest of the school must already be here. But Professor McGonagall showed the first years into a small, empty chamber off the hall. They crowded in, standing rather close together, closer than they would have usually done, peering around nervously. Welcome to Waterstones, said Professor Hannah. The start of term banquet will begin shortly, but before you take your seats in the Great Hall, you will be sorted into your houses. The sorting is a very important ceremony, because while you're here, your house will be something like your family within Hogwarts. You will have classes with the rest of your houses, you will sleep in the house dormitory, and you will spend your time in the house common room. The four houses are called Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Each house has its own noble history, and each has produced outstanding, outstanding witches and wizards. While you are at Hogwarts, your triumphs will earn you house points, while any rule breaking will lose you house points. At the end of the year, the house with the most points is awarded the House Cup, which is a great honor. I hope each of you will be a credit to whichever house becomes yours. The sorting ceremony will take place in a few minutes in front of the rest of the school. I suggest you will smarten yourselves up as much as you can while you're waiting. Her eyes lingered for a moment on Neville's cloak, which was fastened under his left ear, and on Ron's smudged nose, Harry nervously tried to flatten his hair. I shall return when we are ready for you, said Professor McGonagall quietly. At the top of the hall was another table, where the teachers were sitting. Professor McGonagall led the first years up here, so they came to a halt in a line facing the other students, with the teachers behind them. The hundreds of faces staring at them looked like pale lanterns in the flickering candlelight. Dotted here and there amongst the students, the ghost shone a misty silver. Mainly to avoid all the staring eyes, Harry looked upwards and saw a velvety black ceiling dotted with stars. He heard Hermione whisper, It's bewitched to look like the sky outside. I read about it in Hogwarts of History. It was hard to believe there was a ceiling there at all and that the Great Hall didn't simply open up into the heavens. Harry quickly looked down again, as Professor McGonagall silently placed a four-legged stool in front of the first years. On top of the stool, she pointed a witch's hat. This hat was patched and frayed and extremely dirty. Aunt Petunia wouldn't have let it in the house. Maybe they had to try and get a rabbit out of it, Harry thought wildly. <laughs> that seemed the sort of thing. Noticing that everyone in the hall was now staring at the hat, he stared at it too. For a few seconds, there was absolute silence. Then, the hat twitched. A rip near the brim opened wide like a mouth, and the hat began to sing. Oh, you may not think I'm pretty, but don't judge on what you see. I'll eat myself if you can find a smarter hat than me. You can keep your bowlers black, your top hats sleek and tall, for I'm the Hogwarts sorting hat, and I can cap them all. There's nothing in your head hidden that I cannot see, so try me on and I will tell you where you ought to be. You might belong in Gryffindor, where dwell the brave at heart, their daring nerve and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. You might belong in Hufflepuff, where they are just and loyal, 
those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Or yet in wise old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. Or perhaps in Slytherin, you'll make your real friends. Those cunning folks will use any means to achieve their ends. So put me on, don't be afraid, and don't get in a flap. You're in safe hands, though I have none, for I'm a thinking cat. So who would like to be sorted first? Anyone? Anyone? Harry over there? No. You're volunteering? Come on. Come forward, someone give us a round of applause. Come on! Come on! Tell me, Harry, sir. Are you brave? Brave? Are you loyal? Are you kind to all your friends? Are you kind to animals? Have you ever climbed a tree all the way to the top? No. Have you got halfway? No? Okay. Um, have you ever swum in the deep end of a pool? No? Would you try it? Yes. Okay. It sounds to me like we've got... A Gryffindor! <laughs> now, you probably know already what house you are in. I'm going to see what house I think you're in, and we'll see if we agree. Okay, if you could describe yourself in one word, what would it be? Colourful. Colourful, I like. Hmm, okay, so that narrows it down. Would you describe yourself as clever? Yes. Yes. Have you ever built a piece of Ikea furniture on your own? Yes. Yes, you have. Okay. I think, possibly, you might be a Ravenclaw. Yes. I'm all right. Yes, Ravenclaw! Yes. Who's next? Come forward. So Neville was so scared of Snape that it was his bogart. I mean, that's horrible. So how could Snape be a good person if he bullied a child that's like, it, like 13, 13 years old be, to being so scared of him that it's his biggest fear in the world? I mean, that's unredeemable. I thought it was hard. Like, yeah, just because be he was like... Yeah, I was only yeah but he was still the bravest man that Harry ever knew, though. So, but like, he, may, he, may be a, he may be a massive... Ooh. But he was still the bravest man that Harry ever knew. Ooh. Sidious. 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 of Azkaban. Remus. Ooh. Werewolf. Like, well, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like... <laughs> <laughs> Watch the pen. It's just, it's so, but like, like Snape, but Snape was still so brave, and like, and let, let's not forget his undying love for Lily. Yeah, but that's creepy. Lily previously said to him, I have no interest in you whatsoever. I have no interest, like, I'm not interested in you, and he still loved her. No interest. That's creepy. Okay, that's fair, fair point, but have you ever, like, been in love with someone no. and then just, like, not been able to get over them? Yeah, but that's not the same thing. It's similar. <laughs> no, when we're so like microtronus, would then be like their patronus. Yeah, okay, that's fair, true. That, fair enough. <laughs> that is like stalker level creepy. But yeah. okay, I see. I see your point. And the fact that he, you know, found his way into her house, cried over her dead body. I, I, I can get. I, I can get myself into my friend's house. I know. Just left him there. He did, it's like a quiet, quiet one-year-old. Yeah. Like, he did and not. Like, chosen one, <laughs> crying over your dead mother. He did not care about Harry at all. He, he only no, cared about Lily and the fact that he reminded her of it. If, yeah. it. if it wasn't for the fact that Harry was the chosen one, yeah, okay, exactly. You actually have a point. And can we also point out Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start queuing just now, if you don't mind, so that we're all ready for the release of the book. So, if I could get numbers 1 to 10 to... 10!